Hello and welcome to another episode of the Jim Powell Report. I'm your host, Jim Powell, and today we have a very special guest. He's almost like Superman. During the daytime, he works at the West Isbury Post Office, but the rest of the time, he is a world-renowned artist. And our show today is on Jack Ryan's artistic perspectives. Jack, it's great having you on the show here today. Well, thank you, Jim. Thanks so, for having me. I feel so honored to be able to have you here. And uh, we've, I've looked at just some of your portfolio, and I know that uh, these drawings are incredible. You have oh, a very special you. process. What's the process called? It's called stippling, um, and I use a technical pen called a rapidograph. <clears throat> All these drawings are done with rapidograph. Uh, there's not a line in them. Uh, if you look closely, it, it's all dots. Wow. And, and I know that you're from Brooklyn, New York, and so you have a lot of drawings from Brooklyn, New York. Even there's one that's famous. We've seen whenever you go to the Martha's Vineyard Hospital, you've yeah. got the Brooklyn Bridge in there. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that's, that's really neat. Let's take a look at your Brooklyn Bridge. The, here's one little one shot and our, our viewers can see it on the screen, but that's incredible detail. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, the Brooklyn Bridge was a big part of my life when, when I was growing up in Brooklyn. My, my mother used to take my sisters and I, we lived in downtown Brooklyn. On Sundays, we would walk across the bridge every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we'd go down to the South Street Seaport in Manhattan, which back then was nothing like it is now. It was just, uh, it was one small museum building and the Fulton Fish Market. Fulton Fish Market? I mean, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we would eat at this place um, called Sloppy Louie's, and it, it got pretty sloppy, generally. <laughs> <laughs> what was good to order at Sloppy Louie's? Um, I used to get spaghetti and meatballs, uh -huh. believe it or not, but yeah. my, my mother always got fish. Do they have Sloppy it, Joe's? <laughs> That's no, down sloppy, the street. Sloppy Louis. <laughs> you can't get a yeah. Sloppy Joe at Sloppy Louis. It was a great, it was right near there, in fact. Oh, now this is one of your, you just finished drawing this one, is that right? A, a few weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, let's take a let's have our viewers look at this shot. Tell us a little bit about this drawing. That I did from an old photograph, uh, probably around 1940, uh, the shot was taken. It's South Street in Manhattan, which is right by the Fulton Fish Market. It's mm -hmm. the Brooklyn Bridge, you can see, is above it. Mm -hmm. And um, just the photograph struck me. And um, Are these I, old mill buildings or old mercantile buildings? Yeah, you know, they used to um, sell material for sails, you know, sh uh, ropes for boats, um, oh, yeah. uh, life preserve, all that kind of stuff. Kind of like a chandlery. Like yes, we exactly. Have in Menemsha. Yes, but right. On a bigger scale. Much, yeah. yeah. Wow. And they were also, like you said, warehouses and things like that. Gosh, that's um, cool. You know, I don't want to ask you how long it takes to draw something like that. Something but. like that. Um, probably total hours is probably about 100, 150 hours or wow. something like that. But I, I space it out over a pretty long time. Yeah. You know? Well, you want to keep a nice steady hand when you're doing that. <laughs> well, you, I see also you have a lot of. Because that area is around the Brooklyn Bridge, you have a lot of Brooklyn Bridge photographs, and and here's another one that's really cool. Yeah. These these yeah. two right here are excellent. Oh, thanks. Uh, one's a little closer up. Yeah. Uh, this one I was trying to accentuate the steel rope, you know, uh, John Roebling's steel rope. Which I can he almost had a feel it. Then. I can almost feel it. It's hot. Yeah. It's twisting. Yeah. It's. Uh, and it makes it's a cool sound when the wind blows through it. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, it does. Kind of a hum. <laughs> well, besides the Brooklyn Bridge, and I heard that one of your greatest strengths, besides just doing one that's in the Martha's Vineyard Hospital, but that you actually sold the Brooklyn Bridge to someone who did a book, a Pulitzer Prize winning <laughs> author, David McCullough. Yes. Here he is with his wife, Rosalie McCullough. At, uh, which art galleries is that? That was at the Art Space. Mm -hmm. um, that was up in West Tisbury. Um, Margaret Emerson was running it, uh -huh. if you remember. It was most. It was mostly studios, mm -hmm. uh, art studios. She had her studio there. That's cool. And she had this, you know, like a common space that she made into a gallery. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I just was what people needed to come in, and then you you sold that 
drawing of the Brooklyn Bridge to David McCullough, yes. who wrote the book The Great Bridge. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Which I've read like three times. And of course, David McCullough and his wife uh, lived for a long time right in West Tisbury, right on Music Street. Yeah, I think they moved off, but uh, yeah, there's a lot going on there with our. With, uh, you're, you're hanging with good company they're, there. They're fantastic people, the both of them. I love them both very much. They're, they're wonderful. Now, we talked about Uncle Louie, <coughs> Sloppy Louie's in Brooklyn, <laughs> but you actually had an uncle, Uncle Jim? Uncle Jimmy McMahon, yeah. Uncle Jimmy McMahon, and he used to do what? He used to pilot uh, McAllister tugs in New York Harbor. Oh, what a great job. Yeah, and he did that for years and years. He ended up... Uh, piloting the Staten Island Ferry. Holy cow. And uh, I used to steer that. He, we, we used to go visit him in the wheelhouse. When I was a little kid, he'd hold me up and I'd steer it out. Holy cow. Air. You know what? There might be a job opening down at the Woods Hole Marcus Fainter <laughs> Nantucket Steamship Authority. <laughs> well, they, they don't want to talk to me, I'll tell you. But um, after he uh, retired from the Staten Island Ferry, the government offered him a job. They, well, they gave him a choice. He lived in Brooklyn, out on Brown Street in Marine Park. And they said, hey, Jim, you know, you're, you're a good captain. We hate to lose you. Uh, how about you um, pilot ships through the Panama Canal? And he said, uh, you got anything closer to home? <laughs> and they said, yeah, how about the Governor's Island route between the Battery and Governor's Island? Governor's he took that. Island. And he used to pilot the governor, our governor. The when motor it was part vessel of that. governor? Yes. It used to be part of that fleet. And that was your uncle? That, that, that was my uncle Jimmy. So yeah. that's your connection to the governor? Yeah. Holy cow, yeah. that is neat. Yeah. That, is. There are so many cool connections. You know, I meet so many wonderful people, amazing people on this show. And uh, I think this is our 18th year, isn't it, Carl? Yeah, it's our 18th year. Wow. And now we're in high definition. And uh, so you can see us anywhere on YouTube. So, um, but the, great. the 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 uh, drawing that has me in a real conundrum is this one. I want to know what you were doing <laughs> on the Chrysler Building in the summer of '77 on the 77th floor. Yep. What were you doing? Look at this. Look at this handsome lad. What is he <laughs> doing? It looks like you're ago. about ready to just say that's it and let go. Yeah, it wasn't that bad, but uh, we used to go. I've been up in the pinnacle of just about every skyscraper in New York because you were able to do that back then. And I was a bike messenger at that time. You were a bike messenger? Yeah. So you get to fly around the streets oh, yeah. of we New York City? and Went everywhere, yeah. What kind of bike did you yeah, have? A Peugeot, uh, white Peugeot, uh -huh. you know, a beater. And did you have a, a shoulder bag? Oh, yeah, yeah. You had to. And you just <laughs> raced around town. Yeah. And so here you are on the 77th floor of the Chrysler Building. Yeah, I wanted to take some photographs. They were putting up a building. I think it was 101 Park Avenue. And um, my friend Doug and I went up there. And uh, it was easy to get up into the tops of those buildings back then because there was, there was nothing up there except for transmission equipment for radio stations and TV stations. So there was no people around. Mm -hmm. um, and we went up there, there was no glass in the windows. We found a rope and uh, Doug hung me out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad he let you hold the rope <laughs> rather than put it around he your did. neck <laughs> or your ankles. He did. Uh, and that was a great time. And I handed him the, the camera. I was taking photographs and he said, uh, why don't you let me uh, take one of you? So I handed him the camera and he, and he took that shot. Wow, you had nerves of steel to do that. It was invincible, man. Whoa, <laughs> how old were you in that photo? Like 21. Whoa, yeah, you 20. can't die at 21. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, even 77 stories up. Holy cow. What does it feel like to be up 77 stories hanging outside a building? It, it was pretty exhilarating. Um, and I felt like it, the neatest thing about it was I've always admired this particular building and always wanted to do that. I don't know why. I think it's because it's such a unique building. It's all that steel. It's actually aluminum up on the spire of it. It's Art Deco, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, William Van Allen designed that in 1930. And uh, I was thrilled just to be standing on that surface. Mm -hmm. um, it just—it was something that I've looked at my whole life and mm -hmm. admired. 
That's right. Being in Brooklyn and growing up in Brooklyn, you get to see all these magnificent skyscrapers and other yeah. edifices s climb to the sky and then turning around and looking and seeing the little boats going by. Oh, it was, yeah, there was nothing like it. <clears throat> we used to, when we were kids, there was a, uh, this one kind of shows where we used to hang out when we were little, uh, not little, but when we were teenagers and stuff like that. That's, this? Pl that's Plymouth Street in Brooklyn. It go goes right along the, the waterfront. And um, just under, at the very base of the Brooklyn Tower of the Brooklyn Bridge was a scrapyard that was run by the city. So it was all, that's where they used to throw away stuff like police cars and fire engines and the old street signs, those all kinds of signs. The stuff we pulled out of there was just unbelievable. Wow, kind of like a, a pickers. Yeah, you were pickers. yeah, but this stuff was beautiful, beautiful um, office furniture, all made of wo you know wooden desks, uh, file cabinets. Stuff you just don't see anymore. Wow. And um, we, we lugged it all home, a lot of it. Cool. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> My mother wasn't too thrilled no. sometimes. And, and if it were too heavy, you could, would you hop on a train and have no, the train? No, there were no trains down there. No, no trains along the waterfront. No. That, that's an interesting one. That's, Tell us about this. That's uh, what's now the High Line. You know, that it's a very popular uh, park in New York. Um, it's elevated tracks on the west side of Manhattan that were put up in 1934. Mm -hmm. um, and they ran south from 34th Street along 10th Avenue, uh, right through buildings and stuff like that, bringing uh, stuff. The trains would travel under the Hudson River from New Jersey. Incredible. And, yeah. The and engineering that went on in oh, New York City was just fabulous. Can you imagine the weight up there? Just the track that alone with, with all the, I mean, we used to go up there when it was decrepit, you know, mm -hmm. like that was falling down and the West Side Highway mm -hmm. did actually fall down eventually. All fall down. But um, yeah, before they built that, before they built that High Line thing in 34, the trains used to just go along 10th Avenue very slowly, freight trains. Wow. And it got so dangerous, they used to have these guys on horses walk in front of the trains with red flags. And these guys did it up, too. It was funny. I've seen photographs. They, they like, wear cowboy hats and cowboy boots and stuff. Uh -huh. Get people's attention. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and uh, it worked. But they finally did that. Wow. So we've got tugboats. We've got bridges. We've got the Chrysler Building. And here's one of the most famous buildings in the Empire State. The Empire State Building. Yeah. Where's this located? Uh, the Empire State Building is on 34th and 5th, but this vantage point is from, like, directly in front of the library, the main New York Public Library on 5th Avenue and 42nd Street, Whoa. looking south. Mm -hmm. And that's probably around 1942 or 43, the photograph I used for that. Mm -hmm. You can see from the um, light stanchions and things like that. Yeah, the Just, old lights. That's, that's the kind of stuff we used to find down under the bridge. Whoa, good stuff. And yeah. now collectors are trying to oh, find that and, yeah, it's all and gone. search far and wide. And they were so well made. But um, yeah, New York, you know, another great book that uh, talks about Teddy Roosevelt that David McCullough wrote. It's about Teddy Roosevelt growing up in New York and yeah. all the different things. So this, this is a great tie and a connection to, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge to David McCullough and you know, we never know who we're going to be connected to. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> so when I see this, I also see these flags out here. So this must have been a, um, maybe it was a <clears throat> government building or? Oh, they did that a lot in New York. Um, and they still do. You, you see flags all, uh, particularly Fifth Avenue. Uh -huh. yeah. they, they have the flag poles, you know. Um, this was a tricky drawing, too. I tried to make those flags look almost translucent. Uh, some of them have light hitting them and some of the, the first one is in the shadow and the other ones have, you yes, know how when you look one? at a flag sometimes it almost looks That's transparent? Right. When the w way it picks up, the, picks up the sunlight going through yeah, it. Yeah, so that, that was a tricky one. But wow. So, so that, that's the fun of doing this too. Um, I find myself experimenting a lot. You never, I never ever stop learning mm -hmm. how to do s different things. How old were you dots. when you started this? type of artwork? Um, 
very young. Uh, I used to get in trouble for like drawing in the textbooks all the time. You know, my mother would get called to school because I drew a mustache on Joan of Arc or something like that. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> that happened all the time. And now, and now, if you can get a, one of those old textbooks on eBay, they're worth like three thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, yeah, a, right. a Jack Ryan original. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, Do you ever keep any of your old textbooks? No. no. I've got a few it. around because I'm a teacher, but anyways, oh, of course. it's kind of fun. And I've actually found some of my old Spanish books that I had when I took Spanish at Martha's Vineyard Regional High School from Milton Weisberg, a great man, an old sage, wonderful man. And he inspired me a desire to go out and see the world. And um, so by what you learn early, at, you know, you learn this artwork. Do you have pictures or drawings of <clears throat> other places that you're starting to venture out into? Um, no. Uh, do, you, not, do you think you might do that sometime? Well, m my wife Lauren uh, asked me that all the time. <laughs> and uh, She actually said to me one time, trying to get me to draw something other than New York City, mm -hmm. is like trying to get um, Willie Nelson to do an ABBA song. <laughs> oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah, that's right. You're you're so excellent. I mean, this is your gift. Uh, you know? it, it's it's what I love. It's yeah. what I love to do. I do it every just about every night uh -huh. after work at the post office. You know. Nice. It's a great way to relax. Oh yeah. And you know, I can almost smell that diesel smoke coming out of your uncle Jimmy's tugboat. Yeah, that smoke was another thing that I was just experimenting with, um, wow. and, and it worked. How do you make smoke? I, I know. <laughs> Look at that. I, mean, that's I lucked out with that one. And yeah. then you've got the skyline here. Yeah, so this cool. gives you an idea of the, the, the epic or the, the, the era of when this was drawn. And yeah. you know what all these buildings are? Oh, sure. Oh, well, yeah. what, what are they? Well, that's 70 Pine Street. Uh -huh. That's 40 Wall Street. That's 20 Exchange Place. 30 Broad Street. Oh, incredible. Uh, <laughs> you know your town. Yeah. Boy, I tell yeah. you, the next time I go to New York, I want you as my guide. Oh, yeah, I love doing that. We'll go rent a, uh, a convertible. <laughs> that, that'd be we'll a We'll get a 1970 Cadillac convertible. I'm with you. What or, color? Black. Okay. And sounds we'll good. cruise. <laughs> <laughs> or we could get a pink Cadillac. <laughs> Black sounds good. Black Cadillac. And just cruise the town. Now, look, I see another drawing here. This one's interesting because for me, this photograph, this drawing, looks like the Geralda in Sevilla, Spain. This well, this perspective is incredible. It, it's very powerful. I really like that drawing a lot. Thank you. That's another recent one. Um, yeah, that building, the old Singer Tower. When I, it was the tallest building in the world in 1909 when it opened. It was designed by a fellow named Ernest Flagg. And uh, he liked that like Rococo look, you know, the, um, mm -hmm. he, Embellished, incredible, just beautiful, flowery. beautiful. Mm -hmm. They knocked it down in like 1962 and put up a horrible building for U.S. Steel on the site, 165 Broadway. Boy, there must have been uh, a sweet deal in the back rooms. Well, there's a lot that. of outcry about it. Oh, uh, I mean, God. Yeah. well, you're a historian then. Through your artwork, through your hand flows, you capture history. And that is a great contribution that we get to appreciate today. Oh, thank you. Uh, and love. Yeah, it's one of my favorite buildings. So this is the old Singer building. The old Singer Tower. Yeah, my grandfather brought me there a couple of, I actually got to see the lobby, which was just, it was astounding. It was like green marble. The entire, it, it, it's like you never, you never see anything like it in your life. Where do they find green marble? I don't know. Not in Indiana, I don't think. No, I mean, maybe Probably. from Italy. Maybe. I, I, I used to know all that stuff. I don't now. We need to Google that. Where do you yeah. find green marble? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then find the place and then ask them to send us a sample of the green marble. And maybe we can uh, do a little mock-up of it. That is incredible. And I see all the businesses. Even though you have this magnificent building here, you've captured all of the other stores down here in front. So yeah, it's I tried kind, of, to. kind yeah. of the way life really was like there. Um, We've got some more pictures here too. 
follow along. Now, obviously, this is the Fifth Avenue building. This <laughs> is the famous Anvil. The, the Flatiron building, yeah. The yep. Flatiron building, yep. yes. Uh -huh. That's it. And uh, that clock is actually in front of what they call the Fifth Avenue building, 200 Fifth Avenue. Wow. Uh, the Flatiron is 175. Mm -hmm. And that clock, it's funny, it used to say on it, Toy Center, because that's where it, this 200 Fifth Avenue was the toy building. Wow. It's like this 20 story, you know, s gigantic building. It takes up a half a block. And that's where all the buyers and stuff for all of the huge toy, co you know, Mattel, wow. um, all that stuff. That's where they would have their shows, you know, the buyers and sellers and what they, where they would decide what went out this coming Christmas. What the, it was the toy center. Oh, wow. I don't think it is anymore. Well, I wish it were because uh, the elf would love going there. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, that's a real recent one, too. I just mm. finished that one a mm. couple of months ago. Wow. You're cranking them out. And just the exactness of how you make that look so real. Well, that's great. You. Now, this one is one that I have seen in some Christmas presents that you've given. I think you gave my mother a Christmas present of this drawing. I, I might have, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me where this, this uh, photograph is of. That's uh, 1 Madison Avenue. Uh, it's the Metropolitan Life Tower. Met Life. The Met Life building, yeah. yeah. It's 1 Madison. It was uh, the, the architect of that building. Uh, that's another building that was the tallest in the world when mm -hmm. it was completed. There's a lot of those in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost biggest. Well, the financial center for the world is New York yeah. City, and uh, Metropolitan Life is no finer insurance company than Metropolitan Life. Well, they so. they built that in uh, 19, 1909, I believe. There was a lot going on in nineteen oh eight, nineteen oh nine. Yeah. I mean, I have a bathtub, a porcelain covered bathtub, the deep one with claw feet. Sure. The date on the bottom, it was forged in 1908. Really? Yeah. Wow. And there were a lot of things going on. The, the, uh, the oncology unit or the, the x-ray radiology unit at Primary Children's Medical Hospital in Boston was founded in 1908 by Dr. Percy Brown. There were a lot of things going on in 1908, right prior to World War I. And so it's, it's really cool looking at all these pictures, these drawings, I should say drawings, because they were about that time frame. Yeah, with, with the, um, the skyscrapers, and so they, they started really getting into using the steel. Yeah. You know, and the, the development of the elevator, of course, mm -hmm. you know, with Otis. Oh, yeah, Otis um, Elevator Company. Yeah. Uh, Look, I just see this detail of this steel rope. That's a close-up. Yeah, it gets pretty, yeah. That's incredible. But also some other close-ups you have, not just of steel, but this would be of bronze, wouldn't it? How do you mean? Well, this this would have been, what would this lion on, the, this is at the stock market, right? No, actually, he is, oh, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of the bull, probably. Oh, the bull. Fact, well, where's, where's this that, lion? That's at the main library on Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street. That's where I've seen it. Yeah, it's granite. Um, done by a fellow named Potter, and there's two of them, of course. A famous potter made of granite. Lion at the New York Bay Library. <laughs> <laughs> how ironic is it? Yeah, how about yeah, that? Let's drink to that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> All right. And um, Coca Cola. Yeah. Uh, the guy Potter, he also did their female counterparts, which people don't know about, in front of the, uh, the Morgan Library, which is about four blocks away. Mm -hmm. And they're gorgeous. They're oh. lionesses. Now, besides granite, steel, we have the rigging of a ship. Yeah, that's amazing. Like that one. That's rope. That's hemp. That's, yep. That's, that's hemp. <laughs> wow, you're pretty good with hemp. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, look, there are so many, and you have so many more. But Jack, your gift to us is this visual feast that, with your hands running over the paper, with your special. Uh, artistic flair and skill have uh, been able to bless us and we hope to see another show sometime in the future 
and you go ahead and you just f flow whatever if you want to do more of Brooklyn you go right ahead I know there's some uh, there's some other people from Brooklyn that come on this TV show every once in a while in the summertime they would love something from Brooklyn all right and um, maybe we'll follow up on that okay. but anyways Jack it's just been great I can't believe the time has flown we're Half an wow. hour has gone by. Kidding. Thank wow. you so much for coming on our show. Jim, thank you. Yeah. Hey, always a pleasure. You're a great, uh, great guest it. and very happy to have you on this program of Jack Ryan's Artistic Perspectives. And it's mainly in Brooklyn, New York. But uh, we hope you can actually contact him with his email address. And uh, we're very thankful for our sponsors, Life at Humphreys, coming back. And now the Jim Powell Report in high definition. Glad that you got to watch our show today. I'm Jim Powell, your host. See you soon.